G'day everybody. Well on to part two of the printer autopsy. I've got all of the circuit boards and stuff out of it at the moment. That's the uh, the main input board from the computer. There's the interface for it, USB and one called Parallel, which I've never seen that before. It's a very big header as well. But that's the, uh, the interface. It's got a little power PC processor, which is probably the main one. And then what look like what might be RAM modules, I'm not 100% sure. And it's even got the, uh, the slot for maybe extra RAM or something. It's a lot smaller than the, uh, the standard type that most computers of today have. It's just under, it's about two-thirds of the, uh, the width of the standard stuff. It's very small. It's actually like some of the old DDO RAM or the stuff the really old Pentiums use. But that's the main... Uh, basically the brain of the the printer, sorry. That's what processes all of the documents and sends them to the various parts of the system to do their job. This is the uh, switch mode power supply. You got 220, 240 volts coming in through the uh, port here. And then the transformer and the various other parts drops it down to 12 and 24 volt, which is what the rest of the system runs on. Then we've got the uh, the flyback board here. That's just the name I've given to it, which that's the flyback for the corona wire, which is over here. And that, yeah, chucks out about 15 to 15,000 volts and puts it through there, and that's what charges the drums and the paper. But I'm definitely going to be pulling that off. Although I don't think I'll be able to get a primary winding on that ferrite core, unfortunately. There's not a lot of gap between the flyback uh, toroid or whatever the winding is that's in there and the uh, the core there's very little spacing so I might have a go with it I may be able to pull it back just a bit when I get it off but unfortunately I may have to find another way to drive them even though they will blow up on the ZVS or the smaller flybacks so it may not be a uh, something that's very feasible at the moment but Got uh, a lot of RFI suppression chokes, which are in here. They're just a ferrite toroide. They just wrap the cable around and they uh, suppress any noise or radio frequency interference and just provide better signals and things to the various parts of it. That's all of the, uh, the boards. Next up is to get that mechanism out there because that's what drives the uh, all of the rollers and everything. Is that one up there? I don't know what was on the end of that because this all sort of just fell out. There wasn't really anything holding that on. So anyway, let's get that off and finish this thing up. And here's our gearbox for the rollers. There's uh, a lot of these gears are only just sitting in there. They are. There's no actual fasteners on them, which is something I find a bit interesting. But anyway, it makes it a lot easier to uh, get them out. These just very carefully pull off. A lot of these have actually got one-way clutches and things in them, so they're going to be very useful for our uh, various projects and things. And you can see you can turn it one way only, but it locks up if you try and put any of the uh, pressure on it in the wrong direction. No one there. I've got them in there, so I can put some turps in and clean them up later on. So that all just comes off like that. Very complex as well. It's only powered by that BLDC motor. And a lot of them don't appear to be going to anything, as in there's these two rollers here. And then there's these, well there's this one here. And then it's a roller, no it's not. That's a funny looking thing. Anyway, there's a... Yeah, there's no other rollers in here as such. It may just be these two and the ones that are all built into these units that are actually what's conveying the paper. Yeah, that, there's that one up the top which is what feeds it out and there's these ones here which that'll probably be the main feed roller after that one that's what that one controlled yeah very interesting a lot of yeah they're all just sitting on there you can just pull them all off oh some of them are and they're very slippery as well because they're covered in grease yeah, these have all got little uh, retainers built into them so they won't just fly off. Oh, well. I'll get all these uh, gears off and things, get them all soaking, and I think that'll be it. Oh, yeah, we've got the heater. We'll pull that apart because that's got a big, long halogen light down the middle, which is what heats it up. 
So we'll do that next. Okay, last part of the jigsaw is the heater assembly. Now this unit here actually is what heats up the toner, melts it, and presses it onto the paper. The way it works is you've got a halogen lamp, which is what this is. It goes inside this hollow roller, which these are actually its bearings, by the way. I know some of the more expensive ones actually have a radial roller bearing on the ends, but this is just a cheap one. As I just dropped part of it, anyway. But yeah, this is a, uh, basically it's a hollow tube, and the halogen lamp goes inside it, and that heats up its tube. And as the paper, which is still charged with the toner on it, is run through it, it this then melts the toner, and both these rollers then press it onto the paper, making a uh, document. But that's a high temperature silicon roller. It's actually in pretty good nick. A lot of them, they're all chewed up. I know uh, Aussie 50 had one that had massive gouges in it from where the, uh, the plastic dividers, which are probably now all over the floor. There's one. Where one of those actually chomped into it and carved out grooves from where they were... Uh, where they probably shouldn't have been, because these go on like that, and they're basically a what. Then peel a paper off of the roller to stop it sticking and rolling up on it. It's very lightweight as well, and wonder whether it's actually titanium or something. It could be being a uh, being in a laser printer. That's all plastic, it's high temperature stuff. There's more warning labels and things. But yeah, that's all rubbish now. Pretty much sells the rest of this. They're just the uh, plastic retainers. They just go on like that hold the tray on the bottom. But uh, yeah, there's not really much left of it. Hold on to that. That's a uh, little thermostat. Tells the uh, controller whether the lamp's getting too hot and shuts the power down. But yeah, not really much to this. But, uh, anyway, that's basically all of the parts inside a laser printer. You know, be hanging on to them. They're also solenoids as well. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.